guys, welcome to another episode of Iconic TV. Today we're looking at the Republic of Gamers brand new premier board, the Maximus 4 Extreme. Um, it's the top of the range P67 board. Um, it's got a shitload of new features, which we're going to go into now. It's actually a fantastic board. Uh, if you're looking into getting to get into the, the 1155 socket uh, processors like the 2600K, um, then this is definitely the board to get. All the 2500K, any of the K range of processors where you can overclock, um, then this is the board for you to get. Let's have a closer look at the board here. Um, if we look at the back panel here, the input output panel, we have Ethernet, we have one, two, three, four, five, six USB 3 slots, two um, eSLART ports, um, one normal standard USB 2, 7.1 HD sound, um, Blu ray connection, so you can actually overclock your, um, your, your motherboard of the iPhone or Android phone. It's really, really cool technology. Um, it's got two PS2 sockets, which I don't even know why they have these days. And just, be just below that is extra two USB sockets. There's a clear CMOS and um, an SPIF out. If we come around the top here, it looks very similar to the Rampage 3 if you remember our earlier videos. It's, it's very, very similar. It's got really nice black with the whole red look to it. And if we come around the side here, it's got the nice on and off switches for the PCR lane. So if we're not using all the lanes up here, we're just using 16870. Um, we can actually turn off these three lanes and actually save power. Because right now it's actually powering those lanes and there's nothing in those lanes. So it's quite a quite a cool feature. These are probes that you can use it. This is for advanced overclocking. You can check the voltages are going through each of the things here. And uh, it's really, really awesome. And on a side note, you can say hello to our cat Ambia. She's also very keen on the, on the Maximus 4 Extreme. She feels the power of this board. But anyway, let's go back to the memory. I'll be running Mushkin Red Lines, which I chose these ones specifically because they run at 1600 megahertz, mm -hmm. but their timings are fantastic at CL6. It runs at 68624, um, which is really awesome. We chose to get a 6870 because we're not really focusing on, poor, uh, on GPU power here, we're actually focusing on the, poor power, the power of this motherboard mix of the 2600K. So we do have a 2600K here that you can't overclock a board like this without the best Intel process that you can get. So we've got the 2600K in here, and we've got the, the Maximus 4 Extreme in here. I mean, let's have a look at the overclocking. We also decided to put the stock cooler in here because a lot of people buy these boards and, and they actually forget to buy a cooler or decide not to buy a cooler, aftermarket cooler, still want to do a bit of overclocking. Well, you'll be surprised, even with a stock cooler, with a powerful board like this and an unclocked uh, CPU, you can push this, this, this board to the limit. So let's have a look at how, how far I've pushed this. Um, we're right now in the new, the new BIOS over here. As you can see, the new BIOSes are completely different. You can actually use the mouse with them, which is different to the BIOSes before. Um, it's a GUI-based uh, BIOS. Um, it has all the features of the standard BIOS, but except it's GUI. It's very good looking. It has the whole RAG marketing on the top left there. It's an awesome looking BIOS. But let's, what, what really matters is how it performs. So let's have a look here. I was able to overclock it to 5 gigahertz, um, which is really, really powerful for a star cooler. I mean, I myself am so impressed. I'm actually going to buy myself one of these boards as soon as I can. Um, anyway, so first thing you want to do now, you're going to go to the extreme tweak at the top here. Mm -hmm. As you can see, I've got the CPU at 5 gigahertz and the memory at 1600 megahertz. What's really awesome with most boards before, as soon as you decide to overclock the processor, you're trying to overclock the RAM at the same time, and you'd have this kind of like, you'd have to downclock the RAM to run the processor at whatever speed because it keeps trying to push it further. What I really love about these new boards, I don't know how it does it, but it keeps it at a solid 600 megahertz on the, seat, on the RAM and, and whatever speed you put the processor on. So these two don't correlate like they did before, which is really, really awesome in terms of overclocking. Um, so what I did now, this was set to auto, and I must remember this st the stock of this is around about 3.4. So I took this, I took put this to 50, which makes it at 5 gigahertz, and I set the memory to 1600. I enabled the memory bandwidth booster, which makes sure that the memory gets all the all the bandwidth that's required um, in the banks. So I've enabled that. It's really required when you want to do some serious benching and things like that. And I went into the timing control. Over here, you know, I set it at 68624 because that's the the timings of this memory. Um, and that's 
And if we go further down, the Digi VRM mode, yeah? This is more designed for like when you're running multiple GPUs and things like that. Um, then you're going to be playing with this and you can set this to extreme mode and things like that. It's really, really powerful. But seeing that I'm not running SLR or Crossfire, I'm not going to be using this part of the board. But in the future, we're looking at doing this, the same board with some 66, 69, 90s in Crossfire, hopefully. Um, that'll be a really nice video to do with this board. So let's go back. So that all looks really cool. The, the last thing you want to set is, is uh, the CPU manual voltage. If you're going to overclock your, your motherboard, you're going to always have to set the voltage up to, to get it to a really solid overclock. It's, it is risky in terms of it increasing the temperature, but with a board like this, it's, it's not really that risky. Um, what we have putting here, there it shows the 2600K, the stock at 3.4. It won't show, this, show the speed now when you go into the windows, it'll show the overclock. We've got 4 gigs of memory. It's the new B3 step-in. I don't know if you heard before the B3 step-in. They had a bit of a problem um, with the, with the uh, SATA ports wearing out quickly. So those are replaced by the B3 step-in, which we have here. It has, it has the standard BIOS that came with it. I haven't updated the BIOS. And, um, yeah, so that's it so far. It's running a 60 gigabyte solid state drive by Corsair and um, a 700 watt power supply. So what we're going to do now is get back into Windows and um, we're going to do some benches quickly and show the stability of the board and, and a final conclusion. I'll be back. Um, I just I was able to get into Windows with the 5 gigahertz, but it was just slightly unstable. I tried to up the voltages on it, and that also didn't make it 100% um, stable. But what I can guarantee for 5 gigahertz or even 5.2 gigahertz, um, you just need a cooler that's slightly better than the stock cooler. A Hyper 212 Plus from Cooler Master, for example, or if you want even like a 5.2, then I would suggest like the V6 Cooler Master or, or anything like that. Um, but anyway, I was able to get a stock, I mean, an uh, overclock of 4.8, 100% stable, really, really quick. Um, my memory is at 68624 1T, which is really, really fast memory. And um, that's all perfect. And it's obviously the 6870. I just did a, and if we can scroll down here to our temperatures, I mean, for a stock cooler, I'm hardly in between 45 and about 50. That is really, really solid. Um, temperatures for stock cooler and if you look on the other side of the panel here um, our max temperature from running a quick benchmark was 60 degrees so what I've noticed about the new P, uh, P67 chipset 1155 sockets is that they run cooler and um, overclock better and run way faster than any of the R7s the first generation R7 such as the X58 chipset and also the P55 but anyway Let's have a look at, um, uh, we did a super PR quickly of 1 meg, which is 1 meg is usually the standard, and I had a really fast, I mean I'm actually quite astounded, of 7.7 .7 seconds. Um, I was running an R7950 and I could never even push that, even at the same clock. So, clock for clock, the 2600K is faster, or the second generation R7s are faster. Um, well, so it really is an amazing upgrade. The first, now you want to ask yourself, is it expensive? Well, not really. Um, this is obviously the, the high-end stuff of 1155, so it is slightly pricey. But if you want to go into the, the mainstream ones, if you get yourself, say, an R5 2400, which is basically the same, just the, the, the L3 cache is a bit smaller. I think it has a 6 meg L3 cache as opposed to an 8 meg L3 cache. Um, but it's, it still is a really fast process and you can pick those up for around about a grand and a half. It, it's not unlocked, that means you can't overclock it, but if you want to build a budget machine, I'd suggest like a 2400 and a, a standard P8, P67 Asus board that will run anything perfectly fast. But anyway, let's get back into this. This board here, it's amazing, Maximus 4 Extreme. Um, it retails for around 3800, which is I reckon it's money well spent if you're like me, an enthusiast to such an extent, then this is the board for you to get. And um, you have to stick in a 2500K processor, 2600K for, to get the benefit out of it. So we stuck the 2600K and if you want to do the same thing I've done, um, you're looking at about 2800 grand for the board. So nearly about seven, seven and a half grand for, for the two of them together, which is really, really good value for money. So I've just done a quick overview and review of the two boards and it's a fantastic product. If you'd like to find out more, please visit us at iconicrt.co.za.